I, <clears throat> yeah, the question was, would we consider expanding the mill with the increase in resource? Um, scalability is clearly going to be an issue, um, it, you know, with this district, the way it's growing. Uh, my philosophy, though, is let's get it in production to 400 tons per day first, and then we'll figure out, you know, how to optimize and grow it beyond that. Yeah, so Hector Calumet was 96 million ounces. Birmingham now sitting, you know, inferred plus indicated 44 million. Um, we've only drilled it down to 300 meters. We do have a deep drilling program that we're contemplating and, uh, and we'll get underway here. So yeah, you're looking, at, you're definitely looking at the top of deposits, boiled multiple times. It has relatively low base metals, very high silver grades. Um, somewhere in that system, there's going to be a base metal rich portion that'll be comparable to hopefully Hector Kelly Man. I think it's really created a, a, an environment where we know each other better and it's bringing the community right out with us. Um, we also produced a, a video, Casca Kaya, which means land. And the video is a look at First Nation issues as presented by the Casca elders uh, with our response to that. And really, I think our timing's nice because in, in an environment where the First Nation issues in Canada are really being highlighted by the pipeline, um, it talks openly about the interest in seeing development happen, but bringing them along with it. Um, we've also established some bees at Brewery Creek. We have a reclaimed environment and uh, it's perfect um, bee buffet, I'm told. And so the bees are out there. Uh, they'll coexist with operations and it'll create a cottage industry uh, for the community. And it also helps deal with uh, making best use of the reclaimed material for a, a species that's a bit at risk in other parts of the uh, uh, North America. So the, the four assets that I'll talk about, Brewery Creek, uh, Three Aces, and um, the uh, Yukon Mint and our test plant. Um, I'll start with the, the test plant and I'll go over it very quickly. We have a 50 ton a day. The is just how depleted the copper project pipeline is. It's really at multi-decade lows and that's the consequence of, of long years of, of underinvestment and, and the tough markets that we've been in. However, you're starting to see that advanced projects with the permitting taken care of and kind of on the pathway to production are getting some really, uh, really decent prices. So some of the recent transactions for advanced projects, Kay of Echo held by Anglo-American and then the TMOC project held by Nefson, you know, those transactions have happened at that 0.8 to 1 uh, nav. So we think that there's good value to be created by by taking these projects a little bit further than maybe uh, you would have had to do a couple of years ago. That said, there's still a real disconnect between the strong long-term outlook for copper, which we feel really strongly about, and equity market valuation. So I think for, for the longer-term investor, that creates a lot of opportunities in companies like NGX. And I think one of the other things that probably a lot of people in this room uh, will sympathize with, but I think is, is under, underestimated by a lot of investors, is just the difficulty of finding and developing new mines. I think it's it's really significantly underestimated. And a statistic that you see out there, which I, I think is pretty accurate, is that only one in a thousand grassroots projects makes it all the way. And you know, sometimes a, a visual gives you a feeling for the for the extent of that challenge. There's a thousand blue boxes on this, and you know, it's really only one of those that turns into the unicorn that we're all looking for that's worth a whole lot of money. And uh, you know, I think it's that scarcity value of advanced projects that I think underpins the value of NGX. So one quickly to, to diamond drilling. And again, it's, it's another target where, you know, with the, with the first initial holes, you're gonna know whether you're onto something world-class or not in, in this area. Speaking of world-class, we have, here's Canada's only Carlin uh, type gold district here at the Midas Touch. I'm not gonna go over this in too much detail because uh, Graham Downs with Attack Resources just did a, a good summary on on their ground. Well, Strategic is not only a large shareholder of attack, we have a big land position to the south. We actually just acquired the Scarlet East uh, this year. Again, another relatively low cost acquisition. It's in the same stratigraphy as, as the deposit that out of Osiris and we're you know within four kilometers of that. So in, in this emerging district, the fact that that type of land would come available, I mean, that's that's why it pays to have have dry powder in, in, in the till so you can you can snap those type of opportunities up when they come available. One of the things I would really want to point out here though is is the uh, 
the Carlin trend to scale. This is seriously a, a, a large district of, of occurrences. And we were just in the early days of exploring out there and attacks already made a number of major discoveries. Strategic's model was that we're sitting on the upper plate rocks where we would see leakage anomalies from the perspective stratigraphy below. And we, we have done all that early stage uh, soil surveys. We've got those anomalies there. And so now we're, we're waiting to learn a lot from what the attack and barrack are doing to the north to target uh, future drill programs and bring in partners. So here's a little uh, summary here on some of our major shareholdings. Uh, one of the ones I'm personally most bullish on is uh, Rockhaven. They're going to be up next, so I won't spend too much time on that, but it's a road-accessible, high-grade gold-silver resource. Attack Resources, again, just announced second-highest-grade open-pit gold resource in North America. You can now buy it cheaper for when it was announced. Just goes to sort of the market conditions where we're at. As you can see, Silver Range, which was one of our past spin-outs, and Trifecta, which was our most recent. Uh, they're both active explorers. Silver Range is, is focused as a project generator now in the adjacent uh, territories as to not directly compete with strategic, but it was, a, it was a way that we could bring in some geologic talent that was made available to us and, and try to follow the same sort of model as strategic. This spring, based on some good work that the Yukon Geological Survey did last year, uh, we staked a large property we call Hawk and uh, we did some uh, early stage prospecting there this summer. In terms of drilling, uh, I think if you add it up here, we did about 5,000 meters of drilling, about uh, our geologists love trenching as an exploration technique and uh, did probably about 8,000 meters of trenching. And we're focused really on all of Shamrock, Bluto and Nugget, all to the east. We don't have any uh, assay results uh, yet this year, but uh, you can see some pictures of core, some samples from trenching, all looks pretty juicy. So uh, we're pretty excited about uh, what we found this year. Shareholding, you can see how our shareholding has changed uh, with Orion and Osisco uh, becoming partners. Um, you know, I always get asked how much stock I own, so I actually added it up and I'm just over 5 million shares. I won't go into uh, the teams. Uh, I think you'll certainly recognize most board members there as uh, veterans in the mining business. Now we'll get to the video. 100%. Um you know, kind of the, the majority of the gold obviously comes from the Conrad. It comes right to surface. Uh, that's where about 800,000 ounces of that million open pit comes from. You can kind of see with the amount of drilling, the majority has been done here. But Osiris and uh, Ibis and Sunrise, they're completely open. They've hardly received any drilling. So that's going to be the focus of all our drilling going forward is to build ounces. We're not going to work on infilling. We have lots of room to grow these things get up to the two or three, maybe potentially four as much as possible. Uh, the thing is that they're open. One of the, the, the key things here is Osiris and Sunrise and Ibis. Um, unlike Conrad, all of these ones, there's really, they've only been drilled down to one, 200 meters. So there's a ton of room, they're vertically dipping. So lots of room to, to build ounces there. By way of example, this is on the Eastern end of the Conrad. Um, just to, to kind of demonstrate you know, what we wanted to do. We wanted to go in there and, and, and build on ounces. Uh, I mean, we found, what do we have here? Uh, one and a half grams over 64, almost three over 52. You know, and these are near surface within and adjacent to the resource pit. So there's a lot of real estate to, to build these out. Um, and then down here, out right out in here where there's, not, there's no resource. I mean, there's some spectacular grades of almost 10, 10 uh, grams over, what do we got, uh, almost or 23 meters. So lots of real room to build ounces. I've only got this up because I wanted, I'm gonna take you to the uh, sunrise zone right up here. Uh, that'll be our next slide. When, when we look in at the sunrise, this is the Osiris and it wraps around, it's an antiform. Uh, one of the key things last year, we, we uh, hit uh, 15 meters at 13 grams. We undercut that this year, 27 uh, or 26 meters of almost 13 grams. You can kind of see it here in section. Again, just like all the other, other deposits there, these, have, these are uh, open uh, to depth. Um, 
we did, we, you know, I have to acknowledge we did a couple holes on the eastern end of Sunrise. We didn't get that mineralization there. The rock, the, the rock wasn't prepped, uh, so it wasn't a great host there. But we have about 300 meters along here and uh, at depth all through here and along the Cyrus. So look for some more results from uh, Cyrus and, and um, Sunrise, as well as another hole from Conrad coming out this year. And uh, that's, what it, that's what it looks like. It's, uh, it's beautiful rock. They go to look for more ounces. So that's where we're working. All those yellow dots represent new uh, targets that we have in this particular area that are going to be drilled. How do we stack up relative to other uh, silver uh, developers? Well, you know, in terms of grade, in terms of grade and, and tons, probably on the grade side, we're in the top 10% in the world. On the ton side, we're in the, probably in the bottom 10%. Um, but I ask you, in a $14 silver market, where would you rather be? I tell you, grade is a great mitigator to price risk. We also have this environmental group growing rapidly. Um, there's two or three uh, big projects here in Colorado um, and a couple in, uh, in Canada. Um, this business now is 70 professionals and expanding beyond that. It has more than $120 million of backlog. Um, did 10 or a million, 10, 11 million in uh, top line last year. We're able to maintain 30% plus margins in this business, so it's profitable. It throws off cash, um, and we will continue to uh, to grow it. To really be strong, uh, both gold and arsenic soil geochemistry. Never been drilled. Same with the rust target. So the rust is is a pretty new one here for us. So we acquired that ground two years ago, and we did two years worth of soil sampling. And um, those results, it, it's one of the biggest arsenic and soil geochem responses we've seen in the entire Yukon. So we're really excited about that target. If I go to the next slide, in the distance there, so you can see the, the Klaza property mineral resource, it's about three and a half, four kilometers away from where this uh, soil sampler is standing. If we bring up that, that geochem response, that's where it sits. So it's kind of further down in the valley, again, no work has been done to, to test that. So that's going to be something that we're, we're going to be doing in the, in hopefully next year. These I know we'll be doing more uh, in the first half of 2019. So next steps, we're taking this two track approach. The engineering or the advanced projects are really kind of at a desktop engineering phase, limited field work uh, that needs to be done. We're on track to complete a PFS um, by the early 2019. And then we'll start the permitting uh, water rights, and then we'll we'll assess whether we we move that pro whether there's value in moving that project further ahead into into feasibility. And then we'll you know we'll look at options if we if we think there's value to be gained from another spin out like what we did with uh, with Philo. You know we'll look at that. We're we're very flexible on the business side, and then the new projects is a, is an important effort that's going on in the background. Upcoming catalysts, uh, the big one is going to be the pre-feasibility study on Jose Maria, Q1 2019. I think important de-risking um, events will be successful water drilling, which we expect to complete by Q1. And then I think if we can start the permitting process, that'll, that'll help as well. And then stay tuned, you know, we're, we've got an active search for additional exploration projects that can be moved ahead quickly, um, you know, and those will be in, you know those efforts will be announced as as we go on and I think the final thing I'll say is just put my cautionary statement at the back you can uh, you can you can read that on our website but I think the final point I'd make is just don't forget the the scarcity value of projects like this and I think that goes for you know a lot of the other companies that you'll see here uh, exploration is a is a is a is a hard business and I think it is it is the difficulty of finding projects that have passed a couple of these gates, the resource gate, the feasibility study gate, is, uh, is much harder than is appreciated. And I think that should eventually translate into a lot of value for projects that have successfully been able to wend their way through that path. And I think that's going to be an important part of the NGX story going forward. Thanks.